You know exactly why you're here. You're here to learn how to use the scoreboard command. And that works out pretty well because I'm here to teach you how to use the scoreboard command. It's super powerful and I've used it in every single one of my data pack projects. You can use it to make timers or cooldowns, add options to mini games and more. So let me show you how it works. Alrighty, so this is a scoreboard objective. And as you can see, I've named this one example objective. It's basically just a list of players and what score they have. So three letters has a score of 10, Falcon three and Quacklub one. Now you can have as many different objectives like this as you want in a world and all of them can store a different number for each player. So let's learn how to create one right now. We create a scoreboard objective by doing slash scoreboard objectives now we want to add a new one so add then we give it a name i'll give it example objective and then we give a criteria now i'll come back to this later but for now i'm just going to put dummy so now we've created a new scoreboard objective but as you can see by default it doesn't show up anywhere so let's change that now we can do slash scoreboard objectives now instead of adding this time we want to set display and now we choose a location. So below name will show below a player's username. List will show up in tab and the sidebar will show on the side like you saw at the beginning. Now we choose a objectives to display. So example objective. And now here we go. We have our objective displayed on the side. Great. Now that we have our objective, let's set some player scores with it. So we can do that with slash scoreboard players. And there's a bunch of options here, but we just want to set. Now we choose a player and an objective and then what score we want. So let's do a score of 10. So now, as you can see, I have a score of 10 up on this objective. Now we can also make some other changes. So we could scoreboard players add Quacklib, example objective, five. And this will add to our existing score. So it will go from 10 to 15. We can also do the reverse so we can score players remove Quacklib example objective and let's remove all of my score. So now I'm back to zero uh, and we can also just clear a player completely from the objective by doing score players reset Quacklib example objective. And now there we go. We're back to how we started. Now, another thing about the scoreboard players command is that it doesn't actually have to be a player. I've heard some bees buzzing around here. So let's do slash scoreboard players set at E type equals B. So this isn't a player. It's selecting every B in the world and we'll set the an example objective and we'll give them a score of 100. And so now what that's eight B's have just been put on this objective and they all have a score of 100. This is their unique identifier, which identifies each entity. Now it doesn't even have to be an entity either. So we can do slash scoreboard players set. And now let's do, just do absolute gibberish here. Uh, and we'll give that a score of a thousand. And so now there we go. That's uh, at the top of the scoreboard. Um, and so you don't even need to specify an actual player that's online or an entity. You can just do whatever you like. Being able to give any word a score is actually really helpful because let's say you were trying to make a mini game and you wanted an option to give players regeneration when the round started. Now you can store that option in a scoreboard like this. So you could do score players set regeneration example objective one and one could mean on and zero could mean off and then you could have a button that toggles between those two and then you can detect whether it's one when the round starts and give players regeneration. However, this can cause some issues because what if a player with the actual username regeneration logs onto your world? And what if your objective was both tracking just player stats, player scores, and also some options or stats or something that your project used? So this would cause some issues. And it's also just not very clear whether this is an actual player like Quacklib or just something that you're using for your project. So this is why it's best practice to add a symbol at the beginning of this 
that can't be used in a username. So really you can use anything. You could use, you know, percent. A lot of people use dollar sign. Um, I like to use the full stop just because I think it looks cleanest, but it's really up to you. Um, and then we can give that player a score or that word a score. Um, and this technique is known as a fake player. So if you ever hear people referring, uh, you know, about a scoreboard fake player, um, then it's one of these where, you know, it's not an actual player or an entity. It's just a word that's being used to track some option or stat or something like that. Now, I don't know about you, but this objective is getting pretty messy. Um, and so here's a neat trick to reset every single score in the objective. You can do scoreboard players reset asterisk. So this asterisk means everything. Asterisk example objective. And now we're back to a clean objective with no scores. Now, remember how earlier I brushed past adding the scoreboard objective with the dummy criteria? So far, we've been setting all player scores manually, so with commands. And the dummy criteria means that that's the only way that a player score is changed. Other criteria mean that by default, a player score will be updated when they take a certain action. So let's create a new scoreboard objective with a different criteria slash scoreboard objectives add now we'll call it sneak time because that's what it'll track and then we'll start typing in sneak uh, and as you can see this really long criteria name pops up i always just start typing what i want and then i can auto complete the full name uh, like this so there's actually a criteria for every single option in this statistics menu um, so you know anything you like here a very common one uh, is players killed or number of deaths. We have sneak time here. Um, so it's a really handy way to detect different things. Um, anything in the statistics menu can be put as a criteria in a scoreboard. Um, so now we have the scoreboard sneak time. So let's set it to display on the side. Scoreboard objective set display sidebar. Uh, and we'll do sneak time to overwrite the previous one. And now if I crouch, you'll see that it automatically goes up. Um, so obviously we're not modifying with commands and you can see that it goes up in sync with me crouching um, and this can be super handy to just track different things track different stats a very common one is that deaths stat um, because that's kind of the best way to detect when a player dies um, is using a scoreboard with the deaths criteria Alrighty, now I'll teach you how to actually detect when a player has a certain score and then run a command. So we can do execute if score, we'll say quacklib, and we'll choose the objective sneak time. For now, let's just do matches to set a specific number. Matches 1000, run, say quacklib has been sneaking for a while and we'll set that to always active and repeat to run every single tick now nothing happens for now but if i shift then there we go quacklib has been sneaking for a while now that only printed once but you know i've still been sneaking for a while and i'm still sneaking still sneaking and you know it's not acknowledging that i've been seeing for a while so let's change that so instead of exactly 1000 let's do a range. So you can do anywhere between 1,000 and 10,000. So this will check if they have anywhere between 1,000 score and 10,000 score. So now it is constantly running because I do have a score in that range. Now we can make that even better by not limiting it at, uh, at 10,000, sorry. We can just do 1000 dot dot which basically means 1000 until infinity so anywhere above 1000 and there we go i've been sneaking for a while um, we can also reverse that by doing dot dot 1000 so anywhere less than 10,000. obviously nothing's going to print because i have more than a thousand now we can also change this to not just be a hard-coded number um, instead we can do execute if score quacklib sneak time equals so we could check if it equals another player so let's do my good friend three letters sneak time 
So if score quack lib sneak time equals three letters sneak time. So then this will check if our scores are the same. Um, I'll just, you know, pretend he's online right now. Set three letters sneak time 166. Then quack lib been seeing for a while. Um, and let's set him to a different score. And now it won't print that. Um, you can also do things like checking if it's greater than or equal to another player, um, less than or equal to, really anything like that. Now there's one more way that we can use to detect players with a specific score, and that is as a selector. So we can do slash execute as, and here's the selector at A, and we'll select based on scores equal sneak time equals 2000. So this will only select players who have a score of 2000 in the objective sneak time. And then we will run say yippee. Um, and then I will say yippee. Um, now we can also extend that like we did before to be 2000 and lower to also include three letters. But hang on a minute. Three letters didn't actually get printed. Um, and that's because this will only select entities. Um, you cannot select, uh, you know, offline players or things that do not actually exist, like the fake players that we used before. Um, this will only select living, online, existing entities. All right, I'll just finish this video by going over a few of the subcommands that are a bit too complicated to include in this video, just so you have a basic idea of what they do. So for scoreboard players, we have display, which lets you change how a player is displayed up here. Enable, which is used for the slash trigger command. Get simply returns what score a player has and an objective. List just lists all the players that have a score associated to them. Um, operation, lastly, is very handy. It lets you do um, kind of maths. Uh, to a score. So you can do division, multiplication, that sort of thing. Then as for scoreboard objectives, uh, we just have list, which just lists all the scoreboard objectives and modify, which also lets you change how the objective is shown up here. I also forgot to mention how to just clear um, the objective from this slot entirely. So your screen is clear. So you can just do that with scoreboard objectives, set display, sidebar and then instead of specifying an objective you just leave it blank um, and that will just clear it and that's all thank you very much for watching i really hope you learned something and if you did i would appreciate it if you considered subscribing i'm planning on making a lot more of these sorts of videos on different commands and techniques make sure to join my discord server to talk all things commands and until next time happy coding <laughs>